Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration. I've had actually got up to some useful stuff and got some things done. Um, unfortunately, the first thing I was going to talk about having done is no longer actually the case and working properly. <laughs> so I was going to say that I've come in here to the, uh, the biological science area and I've boosted all of the machines in here. So I've put in extra machines like here where there's now three of them, three of them here and so on, and two of those, and so on all the way up the chain with the attempt, with the intention of making everything um, now get, be, being put, to get everything being produced in large enough quantities that all of my supercomputers can keep running constantly all of the time with enough inputs to actually spit out a steady supply of all of the, um, the resources, all of the catalogues I need. Unfortunately, as you can see here, these ones have stopped running, so it hasn't it hasn't actually worked. And if we look here, we can see there's a couple of these packs that we're short of, and we can trace those back up here and see that there's a general shortage of what's these ones. There's a shortage of whatever's supposed to be on this belt, which appears to be that uh, mechanic mechanical data tier one. We go up here, we look into that, we find out that that's not being made because. There's none of this being filled for passed in, and whatever this is, this is this is the um, the biological samples, and those aren't getting passed in because they come from here. This this belt is empty, as you can see, and that's empty because um, if we look around, there's nothing coming in on the input here, and that's because here we go. Finally, we found the actual problem. This belt here is backed up. So what happens here is these machines take in an array of stuff including genetic data and then they spit out a load of stuff they produce the um, the bioculture which is what I actually want they only use some of the genetic one of the ten, there's only a ten they only use one of the ten genetic data they take in and feed ten, nine of them back out again along with the junk data card so in theory those extra ones all of these should be then passed around here and reused but for some reason which I have to admit I'm not entirely sure of this belt has got full and backed up all the way to here which means these aren't getting passed out, which means these aren't getting taken in, and so it's all broken. And I've got the input um, priority set here, so I guess it must just be too many in this in this system. There's there's um, more there's more in this this area than there should be. So it's, it, we, eventually they've all got, just got clogged up in here, and it, and it's backed up and caused problems. So there's a couple of possible ways to fix this, um, but unfortunately they all meet all require me to be up there. One of them is to go up and just pick up a load of these genetics data cards and maybe put them in a machine down in this machine down here so, so they can get fed back into the system later and just pull out the excess that's in, in, in here and that will allow all of this to drain back out and it should then start, it should in theory run. Um, another possibility is to put a chest in here and have inserters passing in and out of it to um, to provide a bit of extra buffer in this space or I could run an extra long belt all the way up and down and up well, up and down here, and then back up to here, just to give a bit of extra space for those uh, cards to, to fill up. Um, now, these aren't none of these are particularly great ideas, but they will all work. Unfortunately, they all require me to be up in the space station in order to do that. And I'm not in the space station at the moment. I am currently out here on um, on Ganymede, where I've been fixing up some things. But I'm going to talk about that more later. So let's get back to the Norvis orbit. So that's called this caused this to stall completely, which is a, a massive pain. And as I say, he's going to require me to go along there to hit it with the old hammer. As an extension of that, I've also now finished all of the um, the infrastructure up here. So this is my this is my where, where all the science packs are made. So here you can see we've got um, astro science coming in. We're making astro science one, two, three, uh, energy one and two, material one, two, and now I've put in the parts that are doing biological. So it's mostly fairly normal. We've got a, a station here that's going to drop off all of the um, the inputs that are required. But then there's a little bit of a difference in that over here, well, we've got as before, we've got these um, these computers turning the input um, catalogs into uh, into insights like that. So that's that's perfectly exactly that's dead normal as it is being done everywhere else. So that's that's dead completely standard. And we've got a belt feeding, and then we've got those being fed down here to the um, computers that are making the significant data um, although they're not actually being used yet because I haven't got the tech to do the four science input yet for that one but I will eventually um, the difference is that instead of having the extra the exotic material coming in on a belt like this and then being dealt with um, in almost in line with it because biological requires lots and lots of different things 
I've got the separate station up here that's got where they're bring, being brought in. So we've got the uh, Vitamalange extract here. We've got bio scrubbers here. They're being fed down belts. And then, and then at that point, it becomes more or less normal. So we've got the two belts coming in here, carrying the the three the the um, the catalogs, the tier one catalogs that are, that you need for this particular science, the insights that you need for every bioscience, and the significant data that you need for every single science. And we're also bringing in the exotic material, which in this particular case is the uh, the vitamalange extract. <clears throat> and that's working. As you can see, we are producing we are producing biological science. I do clearly need to have another one of these long-handled inserters because this is not feeding it in fast enough. Apparently it takes 20 vitamalange extract. That's a lot of vitamalange extract. It takes 20 of these to make one science. So there's a bit of a pause while the... Um, the machine tries to read well, while the uh, the long handled inserter tries to get everything in so but a second one of those would, would make things a lot better or actually swapping these belts over would probably fix it as well because nothing else no nothing else is required in those sort of quantities so I've just, it's because i've got these belts the wrong way around largely then up here we're doing the usual sort of thing what the uh, the sciences are being fed out onto this belt here um, and where we're sorting out the junk data cards and sending them off to be recycled and when this starts working both sciences will be fed onto the same belt and we'll have the tier ones on one side the tier twos on the other and they can be passed off to be scienced off up together uh, further down then we've got standard inputs i've got now let's see um this only requires four bioscripts. i was going to say <clears throat> i've got things the right way around here but it doesn't actually matter so um We've got what the Bioscrubber and the Tier 2 catalogs being passed in here. Those are the things that are just for Bioscience 2. Then we've got the significant data that goes into everything and the insights that go into all the bio. And because it's a Tier 2 science, it also requires the Tier 1 packs to be passed in. So we've got an inserter doing that as well. So this should, should all work. Should. <laughs> the only thing that could cause a problem here that I haven't actually um, accounted for is if the Science 1 backs up all the way to here and then we've got um and it isn't flowing down this belt oh, actually no that should be okay i think we should be all right with that um it has just occurred to me that we are going to end up passing bioscience 2 along this belt as well so i should put another splitter in to um to filter those out and stop and uh, re reduce the amount that's wasted and then there's room up here for three and four. oh no no that's wrong no this should have both of them coming up here because when I put in Bio 3 up here, we're going to need the um, Bioscience 2 um, research packs to be put onto a belt to go into that one as well. Um, and in fact, that's what... Oh, yes, yeah, so this belt is for both of them. So they'll flow up to here, and then they can just be passed in with another one of these long inserters into the, um, into the science machine here. So I remember now, yes, it's been a little while since I did this, so I apologise for the confusions. So these two belts are, both, are going to be fed into both of the... Um, both of the factories. So this this one takes in, yes. Yeah, so, so as you can see here, we've got the two long-handed inserters are taking from here and from here, um, and then we're going to have the same thing mirrored on the other side. That's going to take in from here and from here, and then from this belt, which will have the tier three catalogs and the third extra thing that you require. So yes, I remember now. This is actually designed better than I thought it was when I started talking about it. And here you can see there's a belt coming along for the um, for the third type of thing. And then there's a belt here, which is going to have the the second tier of spe of um, sorry third tier of catalogs. It's going to come along here, and then up here, and be split off as appropriate. So yeah, this is actually slightly better designed than I thought. <laughs> These are then, of course, being fed off down a long, 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 long belt all the way around here, where they're going to be split out and sorted as appropriately, so that they'll be put into the right into the right machines over here and we'll, and we'll eventually end up with the right everything's running over here although this is oh dear <laughs> these are being fed in in the wrong place i think i don't know exactly i'm not sure exactly what's happening here i'm going to need to come along and investigate this because those yeah the ones should be going in here not here so where are those even going is this belt or this belt they seem to be just no they game oh okay Oh, <laughs> this is going to be a problem relative, eventually. So they're just getting passed straight through there because that isn't set up to, yeah, because none of these are actually filters. I'm just, I've just assumed I've got it right. And so they're just all getting passed round. And as you can see, there's huge numbers of them coming through here. Oh dear. Um, well, the, but basically the best I can do at the moment is that and just stop this belt running and then come up here and sort this out 
later. At least that will allow it to back up and it will stop that chest from filling up quite so much. <laughs> well, um, oops. I'm glad I I'm glad I came to talk about this because I hadn't obviously hadn't noticed that and I've discovered another problem here as well. So we'll get those sorted. Once I'd got that running and up and, 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 and working reasonably well, I had a bit more um, a bit more fun with the spaceship. So over here, I've created a, basically this is a docking area for the spaceship. So there's a couple of pipes here because I didn't manage to land in the same place the second time. And the idea is that will feed fuel into the spaceship. The spaceship is at the moment parked down on Norvis over here. It's a bit of an ugly shape at the moment. That's because I did some, some modifications to it um, in order to fit in this generator down here to put in some extra extra engines, some extra fuel of these fuel tanks. So uh, the, the spaceship is, is now a bit of a funny shape. I will at some point, before I start using it heavily, I'll redesign it to make it a bit less ugly. <laughs> but as you can see, there's a, um, a way for fuel to be loaded into it here. We can gradually top these tanks up. And... <laughs> In theory, it hasn't it hasn't remotely worked. Let's because I've not landed in quite the right place, or something. I'm not sure. Um, in theory, the spaceship is supposed to run off the base's power while it's landed, and then only use this when it takes off. And the switch there's a switch there to switch between them. But that pylon wasn't in quite the right place, so that didn't work. Um, so what I've done with this, I've I've had I've had a bit of a play around with it. I've looked at some things I can do. So. Having now flown this and not changed the design since I did, I can have a look at how much fuel it's going or how long it's going to take me to get to various places. So, for example, if I wanted to get out to Henkiseswi, it would take me almost seven minutes to get there, which isn't bad. It's a lot longer than one of these rockets takes, but it's not it's not an unmanageable amount of time. So, I think using these to transport bulk resources around is going to be quite feasible, especially if I've got a couple of warehouses to unload into to make sure I don't have any. Any, any time when there's actually no resources there and we're just waiting seven minutes for a spaceship to turn up. More of a problem, however, is looking at Ganymede. Um, now, that's an hour to get to it with this with this spaceship, and that's, just, that's, that's not realistic. So I am going to have to continue using rockets to get to Ganymede, I think. Um, and then that is how I took myself out there this time. So it's not perfect, but <clears throat> it, it's better than it was, put it that, should put it that way. <laughs> Um, this is the rocket I went to Ganymede, and I should actually tell this to go to somewhere else. Um, let's say Henkes S, we shall we, because that's reasonably close. And that means that the amount, all the fuel that was filling this, that was being wasted loading this rocket up, is now going to be dumped back out into. Except it isn't because there's a pump there. Um, I don't know what's going to have happened to that rocket fuel. I guess we'll find out. But at least that pump has now stopped, so all the fuel that's being created can now be fed into places that are actually going to use it. Um, this switch doesn't seem to be working. I don't think I've wired it up correctly. Let's um, not press the wrong buttons. Let's put in a cable like this. There we go. Okay. So now when the now when the switch has oh okay, um hmm. is it what's the what's the signal it outputs? Is it just A? I think it's A. A is greater than. 80. Um, enabled when A is less than 80. There we go. I'm going to actually wire that up to this pylon so I can check on the number. Yeah, it is A. Right. So that's that's the standard thing. When the um, when the accumulator is, is completely full, it will it will go above 80% full. It will turn off the switch. Uh, and this power and this uh, isothermic generator will essentially more or less stop working uh, stop running because it, it's now only <clears throat> it's now only powering anything that's underneath this pylon which actually is two of the engines so it's still a chunk of it but but at least it's not powering any of the, 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 the uh, console I don't know I'm not sure any of this really matters it's, um, but anyway that's that's sorted that out I've also discovered that you can use solar panels even in space to power a spaceship. So one of the redesign tweaks I'm going to do with this very soon is to shove in some solar panels and maybe some more accumulators, just so this the whole thing doesn't isn't 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 using rocket fuel for multiple th uh, isn't wasting rocket fuel to produce electricity because that seems a bit unnecessary. Um, but that is going to require making the ship bigger, of course. So as I, men I mentioned before, we've got the spaceship has these two things here, the hull stress and the container stress. So I've, I can make the spaceship quite a bit bigger before we start to have any problems from that. And I can also put a bit more storage in as well, which is nice. But at the moment, there's not very much. It's just a little bit of spaceship stuff because I'm, I'm mostly still playing with it. 
So the spaceship has a lot of potential, but I haven't really got there yet. There's a lot, still a lot to do. At the moment, this current design of spaceship, we use the um, the laser turrets here to shoot down the shoot any um, asteroids in space that the ship would otherwise fly into and get damaged. Um, unfortunately, whenever the lasers fire, it takes two more power than the system can provide, and the engine shut off briefly. But it doesn't really matter. It doesn't it doesn't extend the flight time too much. Okay, so as I was saying, I did all of this. Um, I I I. I I flew down here in the spaceship from orbit, and I got the. I eventually managed to get a ship fueled up and ready to go out to Ganymede. And there was quite a lot of stuff I wanted to do out there. And I'm um, so there's a fair amount to talk about out here. But I think I'm going to split the episode here and uh, leave that for next time. So as always, thank you for watching. Don't forget to check out the rest of the things that have been going on on the channel. There's um, always the industrial uh, industrial revolution um, factorio streams. As all these streams will be happening on Wednesdays or Thursdays, depending on how uh, how the rest of my life goes on. And of course, we've got the GTA videos as well. So I hope you're enjoying those, and I'll see you next time.